Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the High School Sports Report. I'm Mike Canici, and I am uh, very honored today to be joined by, uh, he's going to begin his first full season as the head football coach of the Derby uh, uh, Red Raiders. And, of course, I'm talking about uh, Coach Steve Boehner. And, uh, Coach, I want to thank you for coming on. And uh, first off, uh, let me just ask you, um, how, how's, how's the first week been going for you as a head football coach? It's, it's gone well so far. So we're, um, you know, we're, we're getting back into the swing of things with the, after a year off, um, you know, some of our, our, uh, our guys are, are really young, um, definitely trying to learn about, you know, kind of who we have and how they fit. Um, and, and it's probably a pretty similar theme to, uh, if you look at what happened in the spring with a lot of the spring sports, you know, kind of returning after a year off and figuring out a lot of, you know, who fits where and, um, you know, what, how, how to how to put the best pieces in place. And I think across the state, talking to a bunch of coaches in the last few weeks, it's been a pretty reoccurring theme across the state about trying to fit, figure out kind of who fits where. Right. So, Coach, let me ask you first off. Um, it's funny because in February 2020, uh, former coach George French introduced you at the uh, Alberella banquet. Everything was ready to go. And then three weeks later, everything got shut down. Um, I know there was no baseball season that year. And then, of course, uh, last year, I think maybe there was two games of seven on seven, but there really wasn't a football season. So just talk to me about how difficult that was, because not a you know, definitely not a great way to start your first year off. No, it's been a different, uh, it's been a different experience. So yeah, um, going back to getting the job in February of, of 2020, um, you know, we, we were kind of starting to build and, and get guys in the weight room and get ready for a season. And, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of excitement at the time about some of our seniors, you know, uh, Bryce Cotter and Jeff Polis and, you know, Drayton Suma and Zirion Montgomery. And, you know, there was 13 seniors in that class that we were really excited about. A lot of experience coming back. Um, right. a, lot of, a lot of names who, who have done some big things here um, over the last few years. And, and uh, you know, they were that group of kids where they were all in, um, you know, last last summer. They were at the weight. They were in the weight room every day. Um, they were yeah. ready to go. They, they wanted more and more and more. And despite like some of those COVID things happening in, in March, April, May, and even throughout the summer, uh, they were still, no matter what, you know, whether we were cohorting and lifting in groups or whatever we were doing, they were all in for it, which was awesome. Um, you know, so to, to not be able to see those guys have a traditional season was, was heartbreaking. Um, we were able to kind of, you know, maneuver based on what this, what the guidelines were in this, in the state at the time. I know a handful of those guys played in the independent league with some of the, the kids over at, uh, at Woodland. Um, so that was, right. that was pretty cool. Um, you know, to see some of those kids play with, you know, guys like Jason Palmieri and, and, you know, some of those, that group of kids at Woodland was pretty, pretty fun. Um, and we were able to have some seven on sevens here. I think we played Seymour and we played Shelton, which was pretty cool. Um, not the same, but, you know, definitely for those guys just to be able to kind of put a derby jersey on and be on the football field. Um, I think it was, I don't want to say better than nothing, um, but it was definitely, you know, it was an experience. And I remember um, the night of the, that game we played Shelton, you know, Jeff Polis before a game being like, you know, this isn't, this isn't normal, but I'm still fired up to play, you know? So it was still that, you know, that the lights were on, it was Friday night and, you know, it was, you know, some of our Valley rivals, which was really cool for them. Right. And coach, you know, you talked about 13 seniors and uh, you had a lot of, you know, three year starters coming back. So I have to believe it would have been a successful season. And that's the other thing too, that's kind of, you know, frustrating as well is, I mean, you know, you want to come into your first year and, you want good things to happen. And then, you know, something like this happens now, you know, you, you go into a season where you lose 13 seniors and, you know, it's not the best way to begin your first year, but uh, just tell me how difficult that was because there was a lot of talent, as you mentioned, and, you know, I really believe this team could have won maybe six or seven games last year. It was a punch to the gut. Um, you know, talking to some of our, our coaches, you know, Chris Grillo, Chris Grillo, our defensive coordinator, you know, we, uh, we, we would be, you know, starting to kind of put together the, what, what our offense or defense would have looked like. And, you know, anytime you can put, you know, number four on the field next to number 13 with Zarian and Jeff, you know, you're, you knew you were going to have, have talent in your backfield. And, you know, Bryce Cotter brought a lot of experience and Antonio yeah. DeGraca, you know, like there were so many names that for, you know, though they're, 
those those 13 seniors, probably 10 of them had varsity experience. You know, I know, uh, you know, I know um, uh, George had played a lot of those guys. Coach French played a lot of those guys over the years. Like they had been very seasoned players, so they knew exactly what it was going to take. Um, and that was the year just like, you know, we were excited about it. You know, those kids were excited about about the prospects of that year. Um you know, I don't want to. I, I never want to talk about what could have been, but I think that you know there were definitely uh, um, we could have been a pretty competitive team. I, I really, we we really believed that that was a team that was a core of kids that you know, I, you know, staying healthy and um, but you know that was a core of kids that we were really excited about. Um, but we're still excited about what they're doing now. You know, uh, Zirion's running track at UNH. Uh, Jeff yeah. Polk is playing football at Western New England. Uh, Drayton Suma is over at Post. Uh, he's playing football over there. Um, you know, so a handful of those kids have still gone on. Um, and that's kind of a testament to what they did even before we got here was, you know, they were um, – they had, had good film. So uh, it was really good for them. And we're, we're excited, definitely excited for them. And, uh, you know, even Bryce Cotter, he's at, he's at Albertus Magnus, but he's still around almost every day kind of helping us out. Um, oh, at Derby, which yeah. is really cool. He's going to be a great coach. Right. So, Coach, let me ask you, you know, it's funny you brought up Bryce Cotter because he did quarterback, you know, uh, his sophomore and junior uh, seasons. And that that's brings me to my uh, next question. Um, as of right now, who is going to take the snaps from under center this year for you guys? So um, we're looking at a, a, a few guys right now. Um, we're really in an evaluation process, which is, you know, it's it's not uh, atypical, like I said, with what other schools are going through right now. Um we're, you know, there's there's a freshman coming in, uh, Jay Zier Barbera. We're pretty excited about him. Um, you know, he he's been he's done some pretty good things in practice. Uh, Kanye Bailey, um, I th believe he played his freshman year, um, and he's back as a senior uh, now. Um, and he, you know, he's uh, he's had a lot of uh, success in track, um, but he's coming back to play this year. Um, so we're excited about both those guys. Um, you know, so we're we're kind of giving both of them a look based on you know what what we're uh, you know based on what we're looking at uh, with them. We're probably going to make a decision in the next few weeks based on what direction we're going to go. But um, I'm assuming that our we have our game scrimmage this coming Friday. Both of those guys will probably get a look. Right, and you know, Coach, um, I know you don't, you know, you could, you can't tell too much, but uh, what kind of offense would are you going to run this year? Would you say? <laughs> um, we're we're gonna be uh I, I think the um some of the some of the 1980s uh, Derby faithful will be excited to hear about the uh, the prospects of running uh running some wing T concepts uh, oh, nice uh, in in Derby so um, we're looking at some some of that stuff uh, a couple wrinkles mixed and matched in um, but again we're we're just gonna try to put our put our kids in a situation where um, offensively and defensively it fits to what their needs are. Not, you know, we don't want to build a scheme that doesn't fit our kids. Um, and we're confident right now that we have a couple guys who can run the ball. And, um, you know, so that's something we're, we're uh, mixing and matching right now. Um, some of that wing T stuff. Right. And, you know, you brought up the wing T. So, you know, that's pretty much always been a bread and butter play for Derby, you know, offense for Derby and, you know, definitely, they were always able to run. And speaking of which, who is going to be in the backfield or who are you looking at right now in the backfield for you guys? So um, I, I think when you, when both Jay Zier and Kanye are guys who can who can run the ball a little bit, um, you know, we're, we're also looking at uh, there's a junior Carlos Allen. Uh, he had some success in track back, uh, back in the springtime, but um, he's a guy we were pretty excited about. Um, we're pretty excited about carrying the ball for us this year. Um, you know, he, he's he's one of a few guys that we're looking at. Um, there's a handful of of uh, freshmen, sophomores that I'll say that are probably in the mix to touch the ball as well. Uh, but again, uh, we we got I, I before I you know I know I know I'm really excited about Carlos. Carlos is a great player. He's a great leader. Um, you know, and uh, but I think after beyond that, when we look at kind of number two, three, four on yeah. the depth chart. Um, I think Friday will probably tell us a lot about kind of who fits as the second guy or third guy or, or how, however you want to look at it. But um, yeah, Carlos Allen's a guy we're pretty excited about. Right. And you know, coach, it's hard to uh, have your whole team in place after only seven or eight days of practice. And I know you're looking at different kids at the line. You've uh, so for me to ask you, who's going to play guard center and all that right now, that's probably up in the air, but who are the linemen that you guys are really high on this year? Um, so we have, a, we have a handful of guys that we're, we're pretty, uh, we're pretty excited about, uh, Michael Heider, uh, he'll be a senior this year. He he's coming back to play football. Um, we're really excited about him. He brings a lot of leadership to us for us on the line. 
Um, as far as like a steady hand, uh, he's a hard worker. He shows up every day at practice. We're really excited about him. Um, and he's really taking on, taking on kind of a leadership role with this group, even though it's his first year back with, you know, uh, going to be back on the field for a traditional football season, I guess you could say. Uh, he was with us all through last year as well. So um, as far as like kind of understanding and being able to set some expectations, Michael's a guy we're pretty excited about. Um, yeah. Gio Vissens, uh, he comes back to the line. I think he had some experience as a freshman. He's a junior, um, and, and we're, we're excited about him as well. Um, and then uh, Jermaine Higgs is another junior who had a little bit – I think he had a little bit of experience um, as a freshman. Um, really, I think he was a depth guy at that point as a freshman, but he was playing some JV, yeah. a lot of JV line at that point. And we're, we're kind of excited about those three guys in particular right now as far as, uh, as, far as our line. And, and other than when we look beyond those three, it's kind of been mixing and matching and figuring out who a um, lot of younger guys, a lot of freshmen and sophomores in that mix as well. So we're kind of fit, mixing and matching kind of who fits where. Right. And Coach, uh, as of right now, how many kids do you have total each day for practice? Is it, I mean, I know like numbers have been a problem in Derby probably the last 10 years, but a good amount of kids came out this year. So as of right now, um, our new athletic director, uh, Ted Cosgriff has, uh, we moved to like an online, um, registration, which is awesome. Um, yeah. and there's 29 kids who are signed up right now to play football. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're anticipating, you know, that there, there's probably going to be a few more once school starts. Um, there usually is a kind of couple guys who start to trickle in, um, but every day we're anywhere from really, you know, 22 to 25 at practice. Um, you know, so we're, we're really confident in those, you know, 22 to 25 guys that they've been pretty reliable and they're, um, they've been really, you know, buying what we're selling, I guess you could say. Right. And, you know, coach, um, you guys, you're in a tougher position than, you know, other schools. I'll, I'll compare you to Shelton in this sense that, you know, Shelton is able to probably hit and practice more because, you know, if a kid gets hurt, they have people that could back them up. But, you know, it's got to be tricky for you to do a lot of hitting in practice because you really can't afford to have anybody get hurt. And with, you know, 29 kids and a lot of them, you know, new kids, it, how do you maintain, you know, being able to, uh, you know, get the proper practice in and get the reps in and make sure that they're, cause you have to hit, I mean, they need the hidden, but at the same time, you have to be careful because you got to make sure that nobody gets hurt. There's definitely that balance, um, that, but I don't think we, you know we're we're in a unique situation because of our numbers. But I don't think we're the only one in this situation right now. Um, yeah. You know, talking to some of the other school local schools, uh, I think there's a lot of similar um, positions right now. Right, a lot of teams who are kind of under that number of 35, I think you can say. Uh, I can safely say, look, you know, talking to some of those schools, I don't want to put their business out there, but a lot of schools in the area are under 35 kids. Um, so I think everybody's going through that same thing. And especially when you have a handful of kids who are freshmen who might not have ever played football and sophomores who have now not ever played football because they might have joined the team as a freshman, but they never got that true experience. Um, so we're trying to find that balance between um, – how do we how do we be physical in practice and how do we replicate you know um you know contact and uh, with teaching the right way because we have so many kids doing this you know who are who are relatively inexperienced um with also trying to prepare for game speed and you know friday night um it, it's definitely a difficult situation um I, I will say that we're not hitting uh nearly as much as you know uh, other teams i might have coached in the past but i think again i think that's pretty um, that's pretty, uh, like around the rest of the league. I think everybody uh, around the rest of the state, I think there's a lot of teams who are also in that same situation. You know, I, I know even just talking to, uh, you know, um, a few coaches, uh, again, like over the last three or four days, as we were shoring up our, our game scrimmage, talking to Brantford and Hartford public, who are both coming to us on Friday night, they're in a pretty similar situation that we are. And they're, they're having, they're having some pretty similar conversations on their end over there as well. Right. And coach, let me ask you, I'm sure COVID is, has, you know, some to do with this, but why do you, like you said, there's other teams as well. Why do you think the numbers have kind of dropped in the last couple of years as far as kids going out for football? Because, I mean, you know, I'll even say five years ago, you know, teams usually had 40 or more kids. You know, Derby obviously hasn't, but Derby still had about 30 to 35 kids. Why do you think the numbers have dropped for so many schools in the last couple of years? 
I think there's a variety of things at play, Mike. Um, you know, first, I think if you look at the national trend with athletics in, in, in particular, the number of kids participating is going down. Um, and that's in every sport that's not just unique to football. Uh, I think right now with, with football, if you look at um, if you look at some of the some of the youth programs, um, those numbers are, are, are down in the youth programs. And that's, again, not yeah. independent to Derby. Um, you know, I'm from Prospect and I know that some of the, the surrounding areas here have struggled to put teams on the field and they're starting to look at like, hey, maybe not just including one or two towns, but three towns or four to put teams on the field. So, you know, uh, some of those kids, if they're not starting that that habit or that, you know, that um, hobby when they're younger, as they're getting older, it, it, sometimes for those kids, they look at it and they say, okay, well, like, you know, this might be a sport that kids, you know, you can get hurt if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm going to go play against a bunch of kids who already know what they're doing. Um, right. You're going to get hurt. Um, you know, but I, I don't think there, I think, that, I don't know that, that that's necessarily uh, accurate. You know, I, I didn't play football until I was in high school and, um, and I was, you know, I, I picked it up pretty quick and I was healthy through my four years playing football. Um, you know, and um, so I think it's definitely something that it, it is a trend. And, you know, especially when you talk about like some of the stuff with concussions and things like that, um, doing it safely is, is, is huge, but uh, the way we practice, the way we play, the way things are happening now, um, it's, I, I would say it's, it's safe. What we're doing is safe, you know, because yeah. the way we're teaching things, um, you know, we're, we're not teaching, we're teaching things, you know, to keep with health, safety in mind. Right. So, um, you know, we, we go through our tackling progression, I guess you can call it every single, almost every day in practice. Are we hitting yeah. every day? No, but we're teaching kids how to hit, how to tackle, how to get tackled every single day with the hope that when we get to, you know, Friday nights, that's going to keep kids healthier. Right. And, you know, coach, um, as an assistant, you know, lots of times, you had to focus on, you know, the positions you're coaching and stuff like that. Now as a head coach, you have to focus on everything. So you have to, you know, you mentioned 29 kids. You have to watch all 29 kids closely on film and in practice and see, you know, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. And, you know, you got to focus on the offense, the defense, the special teams. So let me ask you, what has been in the first week or so the most challenging for you as a new head coach? Um, I would say it, the evaluation, um, it, yeah. it's definitely an ongoing process. And because like you said, I can't be it, to, for me to see 29 kids at the same time would be impossible. Um, right. but lucky for me, um, I can rely on my coaches and, and I trust them totally and completely. So, um, we debrief every day after practice, you know, so coach Grillo yeah. coaches our defense. Uh, he comes to us from North Haven. Um, uh, Jeremy Clark is our offensive line, our offensive line coach. Um, he comes to us with some experience from Woodland, uh, coach, yeah. Noah, coach Mafo, uh, the last few years, uh, coach Baker, uh, Adam Baker, he helps out with, uh, basketball as well in the school. He used to also help out with baseball. Um, yeah. he helps out with our, our wide receivers and our, our offensive line as well, uh, our defensive line rather as well. Um, so, you know, we have conversations every single day. So if there's something that I'm not seeing, um, maybe in like an individual period where I'm working with quarterbacks and running backs and um, I'm able to go ask Coach Grillo, hey, how did this guy perform? Um, so we're having that dialogue every day. Uh, but, you know, as a head coach, obviously I want to be everywhere, but that that is definitely juggling, um, you know, being able to have my hands on on specific things, with uh, juggling that with also understanding that um, I want to be able to evaluate at the same time. That's that's probably the, the biggest struggle I've personally had over the last the last few weeks. Right. And let me ask you, Coach, um, you know, I know when uh, Coach French was coaching, um, there were times he called the offense, there were times he called the defense, you know, it all depended on you know, the year and stuff, but he mixed it up. Are you going to call both offense and defense in your first year? Or do, how is that going to work? So coach Grillo will call our defense. Um, yeah. uh, we're, we've had a lot of discussions and for, if there was any fortunate part of COVID being able to kind of get to know him and have conversations about philosophy and what we think and um, kind of how we want to prep for every single week. Um, that's been, if there's any fortunate part of this, which there hasn't been much, that's probably one of the big ones is we've been able to kind of have ongoing dialogue about philosophically, who do we want to be on defense? What do we want to do? Um, you know, what are my thoughts about defense? What are his thoughts about defense and how do we kind of mold that together? Um, 
And then, you know, so I, I fully trust him on, on defense and he'll, he'll call our defense and, you know, I'll be there to give input if, if he wants it, but I trust him for, uh, to be able to, you know, kind of put our, put our defense in the right position, uh, on, on offense, it'll probably be a collaboration. Um, coach Clark, again, you know, he, he's a very good, very good football coach, uh, Jeremy Clark. And, uh, you know, we've had some dialogue about, about calling the game, so to speak. So I, I would say early on, it will probably be me. Um, you know, but again, with, with, conversation and dialogue amongst uh whether it's coach coach clark or coach baker or coach grillo um you know that's going to probably be a pretty ongoing evolution right and you know you mentioned bryce cotter uh i would assume bryce is working with the quarterbacks is that accurate or bryce is um bryce is kind of just helping us out wherever we need right now so um you know what's what's great about bryce is um he's a sponge so he'll sit in the he'll sit in our coaches meeting sometimes, um, you know. And I guess I could I guess I, I'll use the phrase coach in training um, because he's so he's kind of just he's so new to new to this side of things, um, right. you know. Just finishing up his playing career this past spring, um, you know. Bryce was a, a very good baseball player, very good football player over the last four years in Derby, um, and uh, you know he's a sponge. So he'll sit in our coaches meetings and he'll just he'll listen. And then um, a lot of his questions will be, where can I, where can I be? What can I help? How can I help? Um, you know, so he'll go help out the receivers um, because it, it was one of the things that I don't know if everybody knows, had we had a season last year, Bryce wouldn't have been our quarterback. Um, Bryce right. was going to move out and play receiver. Um, and, and he had really bought into the idea of playing receiver. And so when we talk about like how to run a route, Bryce is the first one out there kind of guiding some of our young guys and like, Hey, this is how we want to run this route. This is where we want to line up. Um, you know, so some days he'll be over there. Uh, other days he'll, he'll, you know, come over with, you know, the quarterbacks and he'll just help snap, he'll snap the ball and kind of give right. a little bit of a, a piece of advice or, you know, um, defensive days, he'll be with the linebacker sometimes and he'll be with the, the secondary. Um, he's kind of just wherever we need him or, or, you know, because he's also going to school too. So like even the last few days, um, Bryce has been moving into school, but at the same time, he's texting me saying, how was practice? How did it go? What did you guys work on? And, you know, right. we're having, we're having conversations, which is pretty, pretty cool as well. So, um, you know, he's, he's definitely going to help out, help us out. Um, you know, even if it's like little things like filming a part of practice or filming, you know, Friday nights, um, yeah. you know, he'll, he'll be, he'll be, you know, he's definitely involved in everything we're doing. And it's, it's really cool. It's exciting for, you know, to have a, a, a guy who, you know, he just graduated and he, he wants to be around and that that's so, it's so great. And it's, you know, it's good to see, especially, you know, um, you know, he, him have such pride in, in the program. Right. And coach, speaking of which you brought up, you know, Friday nights and stuff, who, we, who do you open up with to start the season and when will that be? So we were, so this Friday we have a try scrimmage. Um, initially was supposed, it's usually just us in Brantford, right? That's usually the scrimmage. Um, yeah. and we were having some conversations with us in Brantford and, um, you know, there were, uh, we decided to bring uh, Harford Harford Public into the mix. Uh, coach, actually, Ronnie Leno, um, he's done helping out yeah. at Harford Public this year. So we were talking uh, about a week ago, just informally about everything that was going on in, in both of our programs, and and he he had mentioned that they were looking for a scrimmage. So we, you know, I said, hey, let me talk to Brantford and see if we can make this work, and maybe you know, we'll include you guys. You know, we're thin uh, numbers wise, and we might not want to play a full four four quarters because you know if we don't want to have injuries and, but I'm sure Branford's going to want to play something a little bit more, you know, traditional. Um, yeah. Let's see if we could work something out here. And, and so it works out for them. It works out for us. And then after that, um, we made the decision just, you know, uh, we made, we made a decision actually pretty recently. Um, we're going to kick Wolkett, the Wolkett game out to the bye week. Uh, so our, we were going to open up a Wolkett week one. Uh, okay. We're actually moving that game out to the bye week just because we're so young. Uh, we wanted to try to, if it was possible, and Wolk, it was great about this, to get a little bit more, a couple more days of practice, um, yeah. you know, and make sure that because our numbers are so, you know, are, are, could be t- are, are a little bit tight. Um, God forbid we had some injuries coming out of our, our game scrimmage. We didn't want to be in a position where it's like, hey, uh, you know, we're really thin week one. How are we going to make it through 10 weeks? So we made the decision to kind of, we're going to play our game scrimmage this Friday. Then week one, that you know, we're we're going to treat that as a bye week. We're going to practice through, and then week two will actually open up at Woodland. So uh, everybody else's week two will be our week one, but we'll be at Woodland to open. Right, and um, I'm sure that you know also gives you the extra time you guys need, which will help. You know, and with a young team, 
it it can't be a bad thing to do. And it's good that Wokat, you know, was receptive to that. Um, yeah. You know, Steve, uh, you mentioned the athletic director. And, you know, for the past several years, it's been Matt Bratch. Uh, he stepped aside. Uh, how has it been going with the new – what's his name again? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Ted Cosgriff. Ted Cosgriff. And how's it going with Ted? Um, You know, is he – pretty hands-on with you guys and stuff he is we have an ongoing dialogue and you know it's a pretty pretty frequent ongoing dialogue just about everything that's going on whether it's you know uh practice our, our numbers who's at practice every day um what we need you know um even little things like moving this game you know i was like hey tag i have an idea um i'm just gonna float it out there what do you think um, and he was, he was great about it. And, and, you know, he's been awesome. Um, you know, Matt did a great job for, for the years he was here and, you know, Matt kind of, uh, you know, when, when I talked to Matt, I always said, Matt, you guided us through a pretty dark period here. Right. Um, he guided us through a period of time where like we were telling kids their seasons and some of them, their careers were over. Um, you yeah. know, he was guiding us through that period of time and, you know, he guided us through, like, I look at, you know, my last few years as the baseball coach and we didn't have fields and Matt was always the AD helping with that. So, you know, while we were building the turf facility, we didn't have fields. Um, you know, so Matt guided us through a pretty trans big transition in Derby with not having fields and being on the road every week, uh, as well as some of the COVID period of time. Um, you know, so he, he did such a great job and, and, uh, you know, I'm definitely, definitely thankful for all his, his work, but, uh, tag has been, he's been great. Um, you know, and, and, uh, a lot of our dialogue has been, has been really strong so far about like, Hey, how do we, how do we, what's best for the program? How do we build this, uh, long-term to, to grow the program, uh, both in the short and long-term, um, you know, and, and what can we do to, to enhance the experience of our kids? Right. You know, coach, um, I'm sure the long-term goal, obviously, is to, you know, make this a respectable football program, have it, you know, be a winning football program. But right now, for your first year in this season, what is the goal right now for you guys for this upcoming season? Um, I, I think our goal right now is to put a product on the field that's going to get better every week. Um, right. If we look at where we're at right now um, and, and – I just want our kids to keep getting better every day. Um, I don't want to look at anything like, Hey, I want to you know, be competing or I don't want, I want to beat a certain team. Um, I don't want, you know, like looking at like state tournaments or league tournaments or um, beating certain teams that line up on the second half of our schedule. I don't think we're there right now. Um, I think yeah. if we're, you know, right now it's how do we teach kids who've never done this before um, how to do this safely? How do we, develop our offense, develop our defense and, 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 you know, develop what we want our, our team to be about, you know, which is, you know, playing physical on offense and, 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 you know, being not turning the ball over on defense and, and, and playing hard and playing gritty um, to steal a Dr. Conway word, playing gritty. Um, that's what we want to be about. And um, so I think, you know, some of our expectations internally are how do we get our kids to play as a team, play gritty, um, and, 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 you know, do those things that made Derby so successful, um, you know, in the, in the eighties and, and how do we, how do we go back to look at like, Hey, what, you know, they were thin then too, you know, our number, their numbers were thin then too. And, and they found ways to win. And, and what can we do to, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, build some of our identity. And that's, that's pretty much our, our big, our big thing right now is building our identity and building our culture about what we want to be about for the next couple next, next few years. Right. And, you know, coach, obviously it's a lot of work and I know, you know, it's probably been a busy week for you, but I'm sure at the same time, the experience has been a lot of fun so far. Right? Yeah, we're having a blast. We're, we're having a blast right now. Um, you know, it's been fun to be back on the field. Uh, you know, I saw some of the pictures on, on social media of like the, some of the, you know, some of the co-practices that were happening over the last couple of days. And, you know, we're so excited about that, like just for, for us and, and turning the lights back on, you know, in, in Derby and, you know, Friday nights and, you know, that feeling of everybody, you know, kind of being back together and, and we're, we're really excited for that. So, um, you know, and, and understanding that this is a, a progression. So like, you know, there's days where, you know, we all, we want that, that finished product to be there and like where we're going to run our plays correctly, or we're going to line, line our things up correctly. And we want that finished product, but sometimes the best part of, of it is, is that growing period. And I think that's where we're at right now is that growing period where, you know, yeah, we're going to, if we run a play three times in a row, we might run it wrong once or twice, but you know what, like, you know, in a, in 
three days from now, when we run it right three times in a row, that, that feeling of satisfaction is going to be there. And, you know, that's, that's what we're, you know, that's what we're, we're kind of looking at as a coaching staff right now is again, building our culture and building that um, understanding that it's, you know, sometimes two steps forward and one step back. And, um, but, but it was pretty similar experience during baseball season, like thinking back to the springtime, you know, just being happy to be back out on the field after a year off. Like, you know, yeah, and I think yeah. that for some of our football players, and again, this isn't just me, but around the state, that understanding of like, we're just happy to be back. Um, and, and, you know, doing this and, you know, being able to say, Hey, week ones, we, you know, we're, we're in, we're officially in game week this week. Cause we play our game scrimmage. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming. You know, I took the job in February of 2020 and, you know, August 29th today. And I, you know, I, I, we, I haven't coached a game yet. So um, yeah. we're, we're pretty excited about it. Yeah. Well, coach, you know, I wish you guys the best of luck this Friday in your scrimmage and obviously uh, week one against Woodland. Um, and obviously throughout the season, you know, we'll all be rooting for you. And uh, I really want to thank you for coming on today and best of luck throughout the season. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Mike. Thank you, coach. That was Derby coach Steve Boehner for the high school sports report. I'm Mike Kenichi saying good night, everyone.